It's the knockouts on MasterChef, the professionals. After weeks of intense competition, only the most talented 12 chefs remain. The lower the numbers get, there's more stress, there's more nerves. You can make one mistake, then that's it, you're going home. There's 11 other chefs that really want the same end goal as me, so it's going to be dog eat dog. I'm not going to go out without fighting. I'm going to really show the judges what I'm made of. The final 12 cook off against each other for the first time. And two will be going home. These chefs have worked incredibly hard to get here. Now they have to prove that they're good enough to stay in the competition. It's going to be hot, it's going to be intense, and I can't wait to see what our chefs are going to deliver. Chefs, welcome back. You are our best 12 chefs left in this competition. Our winner is standing right in this kitchen. This is an invention test. As you can see, there is a table full of stunning ingredients for you to choose from. We want you to create one outstanding plate of food. It can be sweet or savoury. At the end of this, we will choose our best eight. And those eight will go straight through. The four chefs that are left will have to cook off against each other for the remaining two places. Two hours, 15 minutes. One exceptional plate of food. Chefs, off you go. The 12 chefs have 10 minutes to choose from an extensive larder, which includes rabbit, goat, chicken, quail, pigeon, gurnard, oysters, mussels, John Dory, and Dover sole, as well as a wide range of fruit, vegetables, herbs, and spices. We have given our chefs some amazing ingredients. Now they've got to bring that magic into this kitchen. I got something quite quickly when I seen what the ingredients were. Just working on the garnishes now. This is really important that I get this one right, so I'm going to give it everything. They're asking for exceptional food today. Uh, I've written down some nice recipes for it, and hopefully it'll deliver. Really important our chefs have a clear plan and stick with it. It's important that they choose the main ingredient and work around that. It's very easy for them to get confused. Yeah, I've gone for the chicken. It's quite simple, but I'm going to make it extraordinary. I've got a lot of riding on this dish. I don't want to be back in here cooking again today. 33-year-old Andrew has been in the Royal Navy for 12 years and is impressed with his ability to deliver some elegant, flavoursome food. I'd like to think I've surprised the judges. Being a military chef, fine dining and high-end food is really not what we're known for. My stuff is quite normal flavors, but I think I'm elevating traditional things. You were very quick out of the block, chef. Well, I've just seen all them lovely things, and I just basically picked all of my favorite things to eat off that table, and just the dishes come together in my head from that. What are your favorite things? Beef cheek. Beef cheek and beer, I think, is a, a great combination, so I'm going with that. So I'm doing a braised beef cheek with beer sauce, with some horseradish, mashed potato, salt baked beetroots. I'm going to make a crepinette out of uh, bone marrow and bavette steak. It's like a faggot. It's a, a French word for a faggot, really. You always give us a little bit extra. It's always like a pie on the side or a sausage today, a faggot. I do like to do that. I think it just it makes a dish exciting. It's not just meat and veg. There's something else going on, something interesting to eat as well. 
Beef cheek is a cut of meat that needs slow cooking to really tenderize it. So Andrew's going to make sure he does that and hopefully uses some of that cooking liquor to make a sauce. Love the idea of putting the faggots with it as well. Got some bone marrow, some herbs, some minced meat. And he's going to wrap that in some cool, and that's going to be a fantastic addition to his dish. Pembrokeshire-based head chef Malin has delighted the judges with food influenced by his Sri Lankan heritage. The food that I'm cooking in the competition, it's based on the things that I've been tasting since I was a kid. For me to get it right today would mean the world, you know. I want to get to the finals, I want to win. Malin, you did it. Final 12, what about that? Ah, oh, feels amazing. Thank you very much. What do you think that says about you as a chef? I think I've grown a lot since I started in the competition and it's been so lovely to get the comments from the judges, good and bad, because that makes me a better chef and a better person. So it's been an amazing journey. Melon is cooking a coconut goat curry, uh, Sri Lankan fried potatoes, which are deep fried, a spiced aubergine puree, fresh potted peas and mint. I love the sound of this dish. Marlin is dicing the shoulder of goat. He needs to make sure that it absorbs those beautiful spices. It needs to be cooked all of the way through. It needs to be beautiful and tender and moist. Private chef Yan grew up in Alsace-Lorraine, France, and has stood out with some original and inventive food. Yan is making a Dover sole balatine, and he's got a fish mousse, which he's putting through it. I would like to see a nice quantity of fish mousse running through the balantine, nice and even, so that it cooks beautifully well. Jan is also making gnocchi with nettle. Ah. I saw him prepare the, the cooking liquor. He's taken the water from which he's blanched the nettles, added the fish bones to it to get some flavour through it, like a stock. He's then going to cook his gnocchi in the stock to get more flavour through it. Very clever. This competition really pushes you it's very stressful, yeah. Just kind of a, a big six foot four fat chef just walking around, just losing his mind. Oh my God. <sighs> Chefs, 30 minutes have gone. You've had 30 minutes. 22 year old senior sous chef Tom works in a countryside gastro pub and has made an impression by taking humble ingredients to another level. Tom, I can't see a meat or a fish, Chef. No, I'm uh, sticking with vegetables on this dish, I think. Uh, I'm doing violet potatoes with uh, different types of alliums, so pickled onions, uh, roasted onions, uh, onion puree with uh, parmesan sauce, parmesan crisp, and then I'll split it out with the fennel oil. Why are you so drawn to vegetables? Um, well, we have a nice, like, a little allotment patch at work. We have a lot of vegetables, a lot of potatoes around, so when you've got a field full of new potatoes, you need to use them up somehow. I can't wait to see how this dish is coming together. He's using a lot of aliens to accompany this potato dish, and it could work, but it's going to be something stunning. It's going to be something beautiful. As always with a vegetarian dish, you want to be excited when you're eating it. You want to look forward to every mouthful. And I think this Parmesan sauce split with fennel oil will bring the dish together. London-based sous chef Olivia works in a five-star Mayfair hotel and has delivered some well-executed, beautiful dishes. It's definitely going to be a challenge going up against the other 11. I'm the only girl in the room, so I've just got to do it for all the women out there, keep your head down and, and really focus and not get too stressed. You have here my favourite fish in the world. You have a John Dory. Why have you picked this? Um, I really like John Dory. I think it cooks beautifully. It goes with so many of the ingredients on the table. And for me, that was kind of like the first thing that stuck out to me. And I think it's quite important to kind of just go with what your head thinks straight away. But otherwise, uh, you know, it's sometimes like going into a supermarket when you're hungry. It's just like, you know, you want to take everything, but you can't. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing her cook this John Dory. 30 seconds too long in the pan, and it's dry, it's overcooked, and it's not very pleasant to eat. She's 
She's got a lovely collection of garnishes going with this dish. Pickled shallots, we've got some baby shallots, some leeks. So we've got pickled clams. And, of course, it's going to need a really good, strong sauce to bring it all together. So far, 29-year-old head chef Steve has delivered food which demonstrates some impressive technical ability. So I've got a cured gurnard dish with gooseberries, nettle puree, crispy oysters. I'm going to do a soda bread on the side. How, how are you going to cure the fish? Salt, some seaweed, and a touch of armagnac. Really? Yeah. Have you done this before? No. Brandy and fish yeah. with gooseberry and nettles. Yes. A lot of interesting ingredients, a lot of interesting combinations. I'm intrigued with the cognac in the marinade, the seaweed, the salt with the fish, but they've all got to work together with every mouthful. I love the addition of the gooseberries on this plate. Gooseberries can be quite strong, so he's got to get this balance right. Chefs, you are halfway. Halfway. Come on. 22-year-old chef de partie, Exose, has only been a chef for three years but has proven his worth with both sweet and savoury dishes. So, uh, I hope you're hungry. I'm doing chicken five ways. So, <laughs> well, I'm doing a, a chicken skin. I'm going to get that crispy. I'm doing a, the breast roasted on the crown. Fried chicken with the wing. And turn it into lollipops. The chicken thigh, a confit, and I'm going to make a croquette out of it. And then I'm going to do a nice roasted chicken sauce. Serving any veg with this chicken fest, chef? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Every single element of that chicken needs to be cooked to perfection. The lollipop, the bone needs to be beautiful and clean. The croquette, it needs to have a lovely, crunchy, crispy coating and a fantastic flavoured centre. The sauce needs to ooze the flavour of chicken. And, of course, the breast needs to be beautiful and tender and soft. Exosé has set the bar very high for himself, and he's got to achieve that with his cooking of this dish again today. 25-year-old senior sous chef, Freddy, has managed to impress with his love of the classics. Freddy, did you expect to be final 12? Uh, I always hope to get to this stage. It's such a hard competition, you never know what's around the corner but I think I've got a bit of taste to get through to the next round. Uh, so I'm doing a roasted wood pigeon with a pate crouton, butternut squash puree, uh, morels and peas. Oh, I love pigeon. Love pigeon. Do it well. Thank you. Always with wood pigeon, the bird is very lean, the skin breaks very easily. He needs to be very careful when he's cooking it that it doesn't dry out. Freddie's also paid a lot of attention to his butternut squash garnish. Uh, he's turned some and they look wonderful. Freddie has also got a pate crouton. So he's got a little breaded crouton which he's going to fry and then he's got some minced livers and he's going to be spreading that on top of the crouton. A little classical element going with this dish. And I really like the fact he's using the liver of the pigeon to add back into the dish. It'll bring great flavour. 50 minutes left, OK? 50. 31-year-old James is a senior sous chef catering for a London law firm and has shown a delicate touch with some precision cooking. James's dish is a pan-fried gurnard. You're going to have to take that fish off the bone very, very carefully. It's not a lot of meat on the gurnard. You need to be very careful with the cooking of it. You need to make sure the pin bones have been removed. Got a broad bean courgette cucumber fricassee. We've got cockle and tomato verge. Sauce verge was normally using a lot of herbs. He's using tomatoes and the cockles, which just makes it a bit more interesting, I think. You always look like you're enjoying yourself here, are, are you? Yeah, of course, I'm cooking, so that's what I do every day. I, I love doing it, so I'm always going to have a smile on my face while I'm here. The further you go on in the competition, the more you sort of enjoy it and you just get a love for it. It's just a bug, so. Have you got the bug for this? Yes. <laughs> For cookery, yeah, I love bug. 21 year old junior Sue Monty from Solihull has pushed the boat out with some experimental food. 
I'm up and down a bit with everything at the moment because it's quite hard to find your style of food when you're quite young and it's just finding that balance and not just all the classical boring old things. It's got to keep reinventing. Really like the sound of Monty's dish, taking the Dover sole, uh, stuffing it with some parsley and the mousse, mousse and then poaching it and finishing it in butter. Sounds delicious. We've got some rice salad, which has got some pickled girolles running through it. We've also got a broccoli puree too. It's interesting. I'm looking forward to trying this dish. You are the youngest chef in the competition. How does that make you feel? Uh, yeah, it feels like there's a lot, a lot riding on my shoulders of uh, the chefs of today, the young, the young chefs going through. I've got a lot to prove. So what do you need to do? Uh, I need to make sure everything's spot on. I've not got too many elements on my dish, but everything on there has got to be spot on. Indian-born executive chef Abinda has stood out with his subtle use of spice and delicately balanced dishes. Abinda is not cooking anything with spice today, which is quite a surprise. He's using quail breast, which is cooking on the crown, and we've also got a quail pativier as well, a beautiful little pastry pie with the legs that have been braised down, and he's using those in the center, so that's going to be almost like a little pie to sit with this dish. Great idea. We have some gerolles, carrot and ginger puree, pickled morels, and some asparagus tips, as well as a fondant potato. I quite like that he's trying to show uh, another style to his cookery. No Indian flavourings at all? Not at all. So I'm really taking a risk on making a very classic French uh, combination of flavours, just to show another side of a repertoire that I have in me. You're not tempted to just a little pinch of spice somewhere? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Chefs! You have just 25 minutes, all right? 25 minutes to secure yourself a plate. Head chef Stu has stood out with his fusion style that takes inspiration from the Bulti houses and Asian takeaways of his native Birmingham. It's going well. Everything's coming together. Just waiting on a few things to cook, which is slowing up progress. So we're going to do a ballantine of rabbit loin wrapped in pancetta, a courgette flour stuffed with the rabbit liver, the rabbit leg, and some black pudding, and a little sauce that's just been spiced with some green chilies, galangal, and uh, some lemongrass. There we go. Why the Asian flavourings in an otherwise very French dish? Because otherwise it wouldn't be me. Stu has a real love for Asian flavours, so it's no surprise he's bringing that love of spices to his cooking today. Got chilli, lemongrass and galangal going through his sauce. Rabbit is quite a soft, delicate flavour. This is a massive sauce to sit with it. He just needs to make sure the balance is just right. Chefs, you have just five minutes. Please, five minutes. I'm happy with the chicken. <laughs> I'm just going to put it in the oven for one more minute just to be safe. Just trying to um, get the plating right, really. You know, obviously, it's difficult when you kind of come up with a dish on the spot. Chefs, two minutes, please. Just putting the uh, final tweaks, uh, making sure everything's tasting good, uh, ready for the judges. Final 60 seconds on your biggest dish in the competition so far. That's it. Time's up. Well done. Well done. Oh, OK. I'm worried that mine's just meat and veg in, like, two hours, just for meat and veg. Could be worse, mate. Mine's just potato. <laughs> First up is Andrew, with his braised ox cheek. Served with a crepinette made from bone marrow and bavette steak, with horseradish mashed potato, salt-baked beetroot, pickled onions, carrot and fennel seed puree, and a beer sauce.
Andrew, the beef cheek is being cooked beautifully. It's just melting. It's wonderful. The sauce is heavy and rich. The pickled onions you have here, really sharp, and it cuts through. What I find is a really bland garnish, and the broccoli is it there just for the colour. The beetroots, I can't taste the salt crust that you've made to, to cook them in, which is a shame. You know, there's things here I thought could be more exciting. Your crepe and yet is really good. It's moist meat, well seasoned, good texture. But what I really love is your sweet carrot and a seed puree. I think that's a really good touch. It's a very big, wholesome plate of food, but there's not a lot of surprise in the dish. Respectfully, meat and two veg to a certain extent. I think I've got more to give. I think I was happy with what I did, but it was safe. You know, I think I could challenge myself and do something more impressive. Malin's coconut goat curry has been topped with peas and cashews and served with fried potatoes, pickled mango, aubergine puree, and a red onion and coriander ricotta. Melon, the first thing that I'm really disappointed with is that the goat is not cooked enough. The flavours of the curry, they're beautiful. The spices really ring through. But stacking it up this way, the curry sort of dried out. It's a real shame. Your ricotta cheese with lime zest doesn't bring any freshness to the dish. You look to that to sort of mellow the curry flavours down and then the freshness of the, of the mango doesn't really come to the plate because it's cut so small, it's sort of non-existent. I like your use of spices. I particularly like the potatoes with the onion and the chilli. But there is no escaping the fact that that goat meat is really chewy. It was a bit disappointing. I am really keen to get through to that finals, and I really, it, this really means a lot to me. Jan's Dover sole has been filled with a ginger and lime zest mousse, served with fennel puree, nettle gnocchi, mussels, pickled mushrooms, crispy elderflower, and an elderflower fennel and star anise consomme. Nicely cooked fish, quite a bit of heat in there, tastes like garlic. I've got your galangal, which is like a milder ginger, running through your fennel puree. That's a nice combination. The gnocchi is fantastic, it's light, it's got flavour to it, the nettle. Everything about this dish I love. There's not one bit about the dish I don't like. I think the presentation is excellent, it's skillful, and it's well thought out. The elderflower and fennel consomme is fantastic. It's light, it's savoury. And then of the floral notes with the, the elderflower, also like the, the crispy elderflower on the plate here. It's delicious, very skillful. Happy days. I feel a bit overwhelmed. Um, if I went straight through, I'd be a very happy French man. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's dish is violet potatoes, served with roasted onion puree, pickled shallots, roasted baby onions, parmesan crisp, spring onion, and parmesan sauce split with dill oil. Tom, purple potatoes for me, they're not cooked enough, they don't taste of anything. The cookery around the outside of it, that is good. Your sauce is good, it's different. It tastes of Parmesan, it works, and your Parmesan crisp is delicious. The sweet brown onion puree is absolutely delightful. It is buttery and creamy, and it's sweet. But if you're making this dish about the potatoes, show me something I haven't seen. And I think in the time that you had, you could have really made this something special. 
Um, yeah, I was happy with the ingredients I chose, and if I cooked them right, it would probably have been a completely different conversation now, but I didn't. Olivia's roasted John Dory has been coated in a sourdough and pine nut crumb and served with pickled clams, tender stem broccoli, chirolles, baby leeks, and a caper lemon sauce. I'm into this dish in a big way. In a big way. That fish with the butter is just absolutely lovely. And I love that crumb you put across the top because the oil that you get from the pine nuts makes it feel almost buttery again. The garnishes are cooked well. The sauce is beautifully made. It's got a nice texture to it. What I don't get with this dish is surprises. Something that's going to make you stand out from the crowd. For me, this keeps you with the crowd a little bit. I get what Marcus is saying, but what you have given here shows great competency. The clams are nicely cooked and the veg cookery is nice, you know, and it, it's tasty. It's a nice plate of food. Olivia, thank you. You can leave that fish with me. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't think today is the day to take any kind of real risk. Stuck with what I know and it, it's, it's gone to plan. Whew, I can breathe now. Steve's Gurnard has been cured in salt, seaweed, and armagnac, and served with gooseberries, tempura oysters, grillot onions, nettle emulsion, and oyster mayonnaise, accompanied by Gurnard ceviche and buttered honey soda bread. I'm struggling with the Gurnard done this way. It's heavy and chewy. Your marinade needs to be bigger, stronger and fresher to, to carry it. I like the tempura oyster and I quite like the ceviche that you've got inside the little uh, oyster shell there. That works a little bit because you've got a little bit of acid into that. I don't mind the texture of the gurnard that you've used, but it's crying out for something, some citrus through this. So the gooseberries work, but there's not enough to really cut through the seasoning, the saltiness through it. Your soda bread is divine, with a, with a sweetness of honey in the background. But the ceviche is really salty. The oyster mayo is making it salty still. We need more gooseberry if it's going to be this salty. It is what it is. I've made a mistake. The gooseberry weren't as strong as I thought, and I didn't put enough on, and it just ruined the whole dish. Freddy's served his honey roasted pigeon with spinach, roasted and pureed butternut squash, pate crouton, peas, morels, deep fried shallot rings, and a red wine sauce. Your red wine sauce with the shallots, really like that. Works so well with the pigeon. Pigeon is cooked nicely. Do you have shares in spinach we don't know about? Because there's more spinach here than pigeon, Freddy. You've got a sweet puree, which I think is lovely with that gamey pigeon. I particularly love the liver that you've got on that pate. I think that is fantastic. Quite frankly, I'm a happy boy well-executed, well-thought-out ideas, and it's a lovely balanced dish, ready. For you, one of the younger chefs in the competition, it's good to see attention to detail and attention to presentation. Uh, I'm feeling really happy. I just need to carry on doing what I'm doing and just keep pushing and pushing. James has served pan-fried gurnard with broad bean, courgette, and cucumber fricassee. Swiss chard, courgette flour, fennel puree, and a tomato cockle sauce vierge. The Gernard for me is most certainly over. It's going a little bit dry. 
Love that sweet, natural saltiness to the cockles. Love the sweetness of the tomato. But I'm picking up so many different things with every forkful. It's a bit of a muddle. I really enjoy the flavours of the veg, the tomatoes, the diced cucumber, and the cockles are beautifully cooked. But um, I'm not sure why you've decided to add the Swiss chard and the stems and courgette flour as well. That was just too much. Chefs complain sometimes when they've got no time, and then when they've got too much time, they overthink things. It's just a bit confusing, a bit complicated, and a bit overthought. A bit deflated. Got a little bit excited and, and picked, maybe picked too many ingredients. Yeah, it's just one of them things. Monty's dish is Dover sole, filled with parsley vermouth mousse, served with broccoli puree, charred tender stem broccoli, puffed wild rice, pickled parsley stalks and giroles, and a vermouth sauce. I love your fish. Your fish is cooked brilliantly. And that mousse inside, I'm getting a little bit of aniseed there as well. I really like that. You've pickled the broccoli stalk and the mushrooms, I mean, quite heavily. Too sharp for me. I love the, the puffed rice. It's got a bit of texture in there. And the vermouth sauce, it's great, because you can taste the flavour of the alcohol running through it. Puree is nice and smooth. The broccoli is well cooked. You've got great ideas and you've executed it very, very well. Just the pickling is just a little bit too strong. Slightly worried. I really don't want to cook again. It's weird saying that as a chef, but <laughs> in these sort of uh, conditions, I don't want to cook again. Stew's rabbit loin has been wrapped in pancetta and served with courgette flour stuffed with rabbit liver, leg, and black pudding. Rabbit belly bacon peas, morels, courgettes, pickled onion, and a galangal chili soy and lime sauce. I really like the cooking. I think the rabbit's cooked really well. Pancetta around the outside, although I've seen it before, is a good idea. A little bit of smokiness and crispiness. Your stuffed courgette flour is really earthy, rich black pudding. I do like this. The sauce, though it's got a bit of mirror and it's got a bit of heat, needs a bit more body, but um, I like it. Um, and I really like the idea of the rabbit belly that you've turned into a bacon. Very clever. To me, you've been incredibly brave and skillful. When you take a rabbit in a competition like this and use it as good as that, it shows that you are very good at your trade. You've been creative, you've been inventive, you've been brave, and you've executed the dish really well. Thank you very much. I'm feeling really good, really good feedback. For me, I'm exceeding my own expectations. Our binder has served a quail pativier with confit quail leg, quail breast, fondant potato, carrot and ginger puree, pickled morels, asparagus, and a quail sauce. The pativier with the leg meat of the, the quail is delicious. Works so well with this creamy sauce and the white wine. The fondants are nice, they're nicely cooked, you know, but I just find that the main thing here, which is the quail, is, is overcooked for my liking. Everything's really well seasoned. Love the touch of ginger in your carrot puree. A little bit of spice there, really. I'm, I'm glad you added that. What I like about it is your vegetable cookery is very, very good. Your puree is smooth. Your pativier, uh, it's not quite cooked enough, the pastry. It's slightly under. Um, it just could be executed a little bit better. I'm uh, feeling a little bit uh, disappointed uh, with myself. Uh, could have done a bit, uh, touch more better. It's just a minute here and there. But that's, uh, you know, that can make it uh, break your dish. Last up is Exose with his chicken five ways. 
roast chicken breast, crispy chicken skin, fried chicken wing, and chicken thigh croquette. Served with leek and potato puree, morels, pickled oyster mushrooms, butter poached leeks, and a chicken jus. Thanks, Jose. When I heard chicken five ways, oh, I thought, oh, my God, where's he going to go with this? <laughs> but the crown is beautifully cooked. The croquette with the chicken thigh running through it is moist and flavoursome. The little lollipop with the bone wing, you, you've cleaned the bone up, which is really nice. You know what the real surprise in this dish is? It's the little pickled mushroom that you put on there. It's such a lovely, refreshing palate cleanser. It's a little piece of magic that you don't expect. Brilliant. Your puree, really smooth, really creamy, nice, mild flavour of leeks. Technically, really, really well cooked. Very, very well done. You've stayed focused, you haven't overcomplicated it, and, and gone on to show some great skill here. Well done. <laughs> over the moon, over the moon with that. There's. 11 talented chefs out there cooking at such a high level, and I'm one of them. I'm a contender. We've now got a big judging decision to make. Eight of you are going to go straight through to the next round. Four of you are going to have to come back in here and cook again for the remaining two places. We will call you back in as soon as we've made a decision. Chefs, thank you. <laughs> well done, guys. Well done, big guy. Well done. <laughs> they liked some of the things, but then didn't. Uh, the meat was a bit tough. Yeah. We have tasted a lot of food of very varying quality, but we did have some cracking stuff. My favourite of the day was Jan. I really liked his dish. It was very, very clever, technically brilliant, beautifully executed. His dish was delicious. I'd like to put my hand up for another chef, and I think Exosé did a great job today. From the cooking of the breast to the little lollipops, the little treats of the crispy skin, he just stayed focused, delivered great cooking. Can I have a shout-out for a chef? Young Freddie. He made a beautiful pitcher on the plate with his pigeon and then married it together with that beautiful shallot and red wine sauce. Great piece of work from one of the younger chefs in the kitchen. I also want to mention Stu. I really loved Stu's rabbit dish. The sauce needed a bit more body to it, but the flavours and the cooking, fantastic. May be controversial, but Olivia with her John Dory and the beautiful array of summer vegetables I thought was an absolute delight. It was safe, but it tasted good. You'd be very happy eating it. Great potential in Monty. Just those pickled mushrooms. Come on, Monty, <laughs> you know. But I think he's a talented young chef. Absolutely, we should keep him. We have managed to choose, I think, our, our top six chefs, right? And then we've got six other chefs at risk. Andrew. Steve. James, Arbinda, Malin, and Tom. Which two are we going to throw a lifeline to? Which four are going to have to come in here and cook again? Well done, chefs, and thank you very much for your patience. We had lots to discuss, as I'm sure you'll understand. The first chef cooking again is Malin. The second chef cooking again, Steve. The third chef cooking again, 
is Tom. The fourth chef cooking again is James. The other eight, congratulations, well done. We will see you all in the next round. <laughs> oh no! I need a hug. <laughs> oh no! But I'm hey. so relieved we don't have to cook again. I feel so bad for those guys. I'd hate to be doing that again. You four chefs have now got to pick yourselves up and show us what you're made of. You have one hour to use the remaining ingredients here to create one plate to show why you are good enough to stay in this competition. At the end of this, two of you will be going home. Off you go, chefs. It's just like having a bad service at work, isn't it? You just pick yourself up, dish yourself off, go again. In the last uh, measure test, I took a bit of a risk. Didn't pay off, so I need to make sure I nail this one. I have taken on board what the judges had to say, so I want to prove to them that I do listen to them. It's going to be the most intense hour of my life. And I'm going to really, really, really give it my all. These four chefs made errors in the first round. It's cost them. Now it's got to be something that really shows they mean business, that they're good enough to take those final two places. Marilyn, you're cooking again? I am cooking but again. You've got a smile on your face. I am. <laughs> you can do this, right? Yeah. I'm going to stick to my traditional cooking and cook something that I would have at home and then plate it up traditionally as well. So I'm going to make a prawn curry. Will the curry be wetter than the goat curry? It's going to be in a sauce and it's going to be lightly spiced. And then I'm going to do a raw onion salad because we always have raw onion salad with our curries in Sri Lanka. And then a coconut roti to go with it instead of rice. I love the food of Sri Lanka. Do it brilliantly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank chef. you. The thing with the curry sauce is you can't rush it. Give us a rich flavour, a flavour that's got depth to it. That's the most important thing. I want to be able to taste the freshness of the tiger bronze. We don't want them overcooked. We want this dish to be vibrant, full of life and lots of energy. Melon is making a roti. It's like a, a flat bread. But he's putting some coconut in it to mop up that curry with. Mm -mm. 15 minutes gone, 45 minutes left. Come on, chefs! Are you surprised to find yourself here, Chef? No, I made some silly mistakes. Uh, so, no, I'm not surprised. Disappointed, yes, but not, not surprised. What are you going to make? I'm doing a herb roasted sea trout with uh, a mussel hummus, morels, and chard. Mussel hummus? Even when you're fighting for a but you won't play it safe, will you? I probably should at this point, but I've got to go out all guns blazing. There's no, there's no two ways about it. I'm going through, I'm making it happen. Mussel hummus sounds great, but it doesn't have the ingredients for that. There's no chickpeas, there's no tahini. So what we do have here is, is basically it's a, it's a blitzed up mussel meat with a bit of the juice and seasoning and maybe some herbs. Interesting, I've never had that before, but I'm not sure how it's going to sit with this dish. Halfway! Halfway to food glory! Tom, are you, are you sticking with veg? Um, mainly vegetables, yeah. I'm going to do asparagus with brown butter hollandaise, uh, orange sauce, um, lardo. What are you going to do with the lardo? Just going to blow a torch it and sit over the asparagus. What have you learned from the last round? If you're going to play it simple, I think you've got to really knock it out of the park. I think my dish was a little bit simple and the main element went right. So now the main element's got to be bang on. 
Tom is really sticking to his guns and what he prefers to cook, it has got to be a knockout asparagus dish. Every element that goes on the plate has got to be done to perfection. A good hollandaise is about a good reduction. Butter needs to be clarified and slightly brown, and it will give the hollandaise a little nutty finish to it. At the end of it, you'll want a beautiful, smooth hollandaise sauce that's well-seasoned and tasting delicious. Gentlemen, you have 10 minutes left, please. You look serious, James. Yeah, uh, this means a lot to me. I'm living, breathing this at the moment. Every minute, it's taken up all my life, so I really want to do well. It needs to be on the money. Very clean, not overcomplicated. Um, just a stunning plate of food. James is making a pigeon dish. He's roasting it on the crown, serving it with a turnip puree. We've got your rolls cooked in butter, puffed barley, wilted chard, and a port and pigeon sauce. Sounds great, and you can see how much this means to James. He is running 100 miles an hour. He's got his head down, and he's focused. Malin, Malin, ah! I'm making another roti, so I didn't want to give this one. There's just four minutes left. And there's some chefs here with quite a bit of work to do. Come on, boys. Finishing touches now. Uh, trout's nice and pink. Chefs, 30 seconds. Final touches. Come on. Come on, chefs. Time's up. Stop, chefs, please. First up is Tom with his smoked asparagus, brown butter hollandaise, lardo, roasted onions, hazelnuts, and an orange sauce. That's a relatively simple looking dish. I think that tastes fantastic. You can clearly taste the smoke on there. It, it's almost bitter. And then it goes into that really powerful, crunchy asparagus taste and texture. You get a little bit of lardo on there as well that's really, really salty. Mixed with the delicate crunch of an onion, I find the whole thing absolutely delightful. I like your ideas, Tom. The nuts are a nice addition. The burnt butter hollandaise for me, I love. I want more of it. I want every bite of my asparagus to be wrapped in that lovely hollandaise. That's what that dish is missing. The orange sauce is like a vinaigrette, you know, that you would just dip the asparagus in. So I quite like that sauce as well. But even if they were to mix together, it's like an orange hollandaise. Hey, win-win. It is a very simple dish. But then it works. It's delicious. A lot better than the last round. It went a lot smoother. It was a simple dish, but I think it performed well. We'll just have to wait and see, really. Malin has made Sri Lankan prawn curry with onion chili sambal, choice some with dried apricots, and a coconut roti. Malin. Look at these two, they're still eating. <laughs> it's delicious. Mm. You've got great curry flavour, the prawns are beautifully cooked. Onion sambal is delicious, it works a treat with the dish. I love onions done like this with a little bit of chilli running through it. The choy sum with the apricots, almost like a little chutney there. It's really good. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Marlin, your sauce is creamy, salty, with a creeping, spicy heat. Your rotis, flavoured with coconut, again, well-seasoned. Let me tell you, this is lovely. It's absolutely lovely. I believe this is possibly our 14th 
dish of the day and I didn't think I could eat any more, but I could have another helping of that. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Feels really good, yeah, but you still don't know, you know, <laughs> like, are you going to get through or not? But still, for what I did in an hour, I am the happy chef. <laughs> Steve has served herb roasted sea trout with mussel hummus, pickled fennel, Swiss chard, morels, and a mussel sauce. Lovely flaky fish, and it's vibrant with herbs. I really like this mussel sauce, if you like, this mussel hummus. It's got a slight nuttiness to it. It's very, very different. But it looks a very messy dish to me. The, the, the chard is OK, there's a bit of bite to it, it's seasoned well, and it sits nicely under the dish. But everything's just broken up. It's really, really tough to get an angle on what the dish is all about. And the sauce, the, the mussel jus, doesn't really bring much to the dish because it's just water. It's such a shame. There's a lot going on here, and I feel slightly frustrated that it's turned out like this, Steve, because you've done some amazing plates of food in the past. Yeah, bad day at the office, though. Not great. Did, that dish did not turn out how I wanted it to. Got a bit lost. Last up is James with his roasted pigeon, with turnip puree, pan-fried gerols, puffed barley, glazed shallots, wilted chard, and a port and pigeon sauce. The pigeon needs a bit more roasting to get that beautiful roasty flavour but it's nice and, and pink. The barley needs a bit more cooking. You know, another minute and it'll be much better to chew through. The alternate puree I really like. I mean, there's a bitterness to turn it, which I find really, really pleasing, and it's nicely seasoned. The mushrooms are odd. They need a bit more cooking, and they need some seasoning or a little bit of butter over them. We've got a sweet sauce that lacks meatiness. It's got a good shine to it, though. But I think the shine and the depth is coming from the port and not enough flavour coming from the pigeon. You've put a lot of work into this plate, but I think there's a few things suffered for the volume of work you're trying to do in the time that you had. It's touch and go. Um, I haven't put together a solid plate of food again, so it's a little bit gutting. Chefs, honestly, I think you should be proud of yourselves. Well done. For the second time today, we've got a big decision to make. Off you go. I think they showed good old-fashioned gumption and guts coming back in here. They cook with real energy and pride. Malin cooked a fantastic Sri Lankan dish, a hundred times better than the first one, and I'm just really pleased for him. For me, the best of the four. I feel for Steve. He's cooked some very interesting food in this competition. That was tough for him today. Something just went wrong. He knows it, and I think it's cost him dearly. So, Malin, through the next round. Steve, leaving the competition. Right, that leaves us James or Tom. James really did push himself. He was running around and trying to do so much on this dish, and you can see it's cost him on a few things. Pigeon beautifully pink, yet didn't get that love of, of the basting or the roasting on, on the outside. Pearl barley, yeah, it needed more cooking, definitely, and so did the mushrooms. Tom's asparagus with the lardo as well that he crisped up, gave real saltiness. And I found the taste delightful. Quite like the orange sauce, it was almost like a vinaigrette. 
but it was a simple dish and it should have had a lot more of that beautifully made butter hollandaise sauce. Maybe I've done enough, we'll just have to wait and see really. Uh, I'll be good if I went home. It's hanging in the balance, so I'm just going to keep my fingers, toes and everything crossed that I go through to the last ten. <laughs> Well done, all of you. You came in here with a smile on your face. You gave it 100%, and that's all we can ask. We have made a decision. The first chef through to the next round is... Malin. Well done, Malin. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well done, The second chef through to the next round is... Tom. Well done, Tom. Steve, James, hold your heads up high and I wish you the best of luck in all that you do. It's a hard pill to swallow. Um, gave it my all. Um, wasn't good enough, but there's still plenty of time for me to make a name for myself in the industry. So I'm just going to keep plugging away. Obviously, I'm absolutely devastated as we get out, but I'm, I'm glad I did it. Maybe I bit off more than I could chew. Got this far and messed it up. Yeah, Bit of a relief, really. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure off your shoulders and really happy now. I just can't believe it. I think every inch of my body hurts and my brain hurts. <laughs> but still happy, you know. I want to get to the finals. And hopefully everything will go to plan. Next time. The knockouts continue. And the final 10 face a brand new MasterChef challenge. It's going to be scary. They've not faced anything like this before. Actually, nor have we. I've given myself a lot to do. It's a big push. I'm starting to feel the stress a little bit. Today's boards are having a party. This guy's gone to town, man. Before returning to the MasterChef kitchen to fight for their place in the semi-finals. That is really clever. That's really, really clever. <laughs>